Les Miserables. It's their musical. And welcome. Mary Michelle is back. <laughs> oh, it's so nice to see you. Oh, it's nice to see you. Do you, you realize that, that, that people didn't venture out of their homes for two weeks because you weren't here to tell them it was okay? No, Mike, don't say that. I want people to have free will. Okay, free will. <laughs> well, we walked outside and they're going to do trouble. Anyway, it's nice to see you again. <laughs> nice to see you, Mike. And we are taking your calls at 241-1310. Before we get to the phones, I know you wanted to talk about one of the planets that's up in the skies, namely, oh, Venus, oh, Venus, <laughs> Venus, if you will. Well, I know that it doesn't feel like it particularly today, but Venus is the planet that rules the sign of Taurus, and we're in the sign in the month of May, and the month of May is the sign of Taurus. Um, and I think that Venus is, you know, we all know who she is. She's the goddess of love and beauty, and when you think of the first of May, the first of May is about going out and having a good time. Venus is really the goddess of love. She is not the goddess of marriage. She is the goddess that likes to play with people. Um, she tends to get other people into trouble as well as herself. She was married to the god Vulcan, or Hephaestus, who was extremely ugly. He was a fellow that had a, a bad leg, he had a limp, and he was kind of a workaholic. And really the lesson that she had to learn from him and he had to learn from her is that, that um, in life one has to have a lot of fun as well as work. And that was why Venus kept playing around on him, particularly with Mars. <laughs> so anyway... Sexuous relationship here, isn't it? Well, it is, but the thing is that she was very good at, at creating diplomacy. She was not good at, at creating structure in, in a relationship. That was really the domain of Hera, or Juno, the, the queen of the goddesses. And she's the one that rules marriage. When you think about it, marriage is really a contract. It's about... You know, who gets what, the house, the, the place, the this, the that. And Venus is really the part that, um, Venus is exalted in the sign of Pisces. And Pisces is uh, the idea of compassion. So Venus is more about how we uh, perceive love. And when it's in the sign of Pisces, it's the best possible place. Because it means that that person truly knows how to love another person um, totally unselfishly. And conversely, what's sort of funny about Venus is that even though she is not involved in this idea of marriage and contracts and money and so on, she is the one that rules money. Um, if, she, if she is not the one that, that handles it, is that what you said? Yes, I know. It's sort of funny. It's a, now she's the one that controls it. She, well, she's the one that inspires you to make it. Oh, she's the one that makes you go out and get six jobs, huh? All <laughs> right, exactly. Venus is the one that you know, can make you a little more material than you want to be, but when it comes to actually owning things or, you know, having something that has some stability and commitment to it, that is really the domain of Hera or Juno, the queen of the goddesses. Venus is, is not about stability and commitment. She's about enjoying... But when you think of the 1st of May, what did people do around the 1st of May? They went out and danced around the Maypole and originally... Uh, it was a pagan holiday of, you know, let's everybody have a good time with everybody else. And it wasn't about any one particular mate. So, <laughs> and Venus has been in many cultures. You know, she's not just known as the Greek and Roman goddess. I mean, long before, uh, long before uh, mm, the Greeks and the Romans in, in what was Babylonia and Chaldea, she was the goddess of, uh, she was called Ishtar. And she was the goddess of, again, love and beauty. But she was also the primal, primordial goddess. She was the most, uh, you know, today in the Greek and Romans, we tend to think of her as being related to, um, there were three kinds of goddesses. There was uh, the, the young girl, the, the woman in the middle of her life, and the old crone, and Venus was very much the young girl. But in, in the ancient beliefs, she really incorporated all three. When you think of the phases of the moon, um, the moon... Um, comes up, it becomes a kind of, uh, you know, as, it, it's, as it's growing is when we want to plant and start new things, and then when it becomes full, that's the maturity, that's the height of the feminine power, and then after that, you know, in the as the moon goes down and becomes smaller, that's when we want to learn to be... Um, 
how shall I say it, we have to be more reflective. It's not about the time that we want to start new things. Anyway, so Venus, you know, is usually, we relate her to that beginning, fresh new beginnings when you plant. You plant in May, April, May. Um, so even though it's raining out there today, uh, it is the time that one wants to, to plant. My grandmother told me that you want to plant certain flowers before the 12th of May. Well, I think it's, uh, well, there are, uh, let me see if I have this correct, because I, <laughs> I think it is the 10th of May is the date that you can plant almost anything, because that's when the last frost is normally, I mean, this is, this is the cutoff point for that. I'd never heard about before the 12th, other than there's certain things that you're supposed to put in the ground before I know that. Can I ask you a question? Sure. We're talking about the phases of the moon. By the way, we're going to take your calls at 241-1310 for Mary Michelle. You talk to any police officer who is out there, I mean, any of them, it could be hail, thunder, snow, no matter what. They can always tell you when it's a full moon because the crazies are out. Now, what truth is there to that? I mean, Well, you know, the moon, I think the thing about the moon, uh, the most um, physiological, scientific thing about the moon is that it relates to the force of gravity. Uh, it pulls the tides back and forth, and, you know, Newton, uh, Isaac Newton studied uh, the gravity and the nature of the moon and the nature of reflected light, and the moon is about reflected light. There is no light that comes from the moon. It comes by reflection from the sun. But what the moon does do is it works, uh, it pulls the gravity of the moon, the way it's connected to the earth, um, is a push-pull kind of thing. And the tides um, are ruled, of course, by the moon, as we know. And I think that whenever the tides uh, exert a tremendous pull like that, when there's kind of this, this energy of, of conflict that goes on between the waters and the earth, um, it's only natural. What are we made of, human beings? We're made of matter, but we are 90 eight percent water I mean there's a lot of water in us so that the idea is that the moon works very strongly on our physical bodies and our daily routines our daily rituals so you know nurses doctors uh, policemen people that deal with the public and usually in crisis situations will see people a lot when they have um, you know put too much strain on the, on the nature of the, the physical body there's an imbalance and that's what happens when people go crazy you know they put too much strain on the body um, you know they they haven't understood what the particular problem is that they're having to deal with so they flip out um, and you know <laughs> love that's the term what, flip out. <laughs> what I said I love your term flip out <laughs> um, but you, when we talk about the moon we talk about other phases also I mean there is if you remember the OJ Simpson trial the ascending and descending moon uh, where it was you know growing bigger and then getting smaller, things like that. So, so there is some basis for the idea that the full moon can Yes, oh, I think definitely. I mean, I think the full moon is, it's when, I, you know, the thing that I, that I liken it to the most easily is, is a pimple. A what? <laughs> a pimple. <laughs> okay. You know how a, a, you can feel it coming and then it, it finally gets to that point where you know that you have to do something about it, that it has to burst? <laughs> Well, that's what happens at the full moon. <laughs> There's this eruption. And sometimes the eruption can be a very healthy one because you know that you have eliminated the poisons. Mike is just laughing. He's sitting over there thinking I'm completely nuts talking about this. But it's true, you know. And, well, you could also take a more beautiful image of, say, that it's the flower that's finally bursting into blossom. <laughs> Thank you. But that's not what it feels like. <laughs> it feels more like the pimple. Uh, Speechless. <laughs> We're talking to Mary Michelle, taking your calls on astrology, 241-1310. If you have a question for Mary Michelle, please get to us now, 241-1310. We'll be back in one minute. Great American food, oversized portions, unbelievable prices, and a friendly, unpretentious environment. I'm with our phones. Uh, we had some calls, and they seem to have disappeared. Would you please get to us again, 241-1310. We're talking to Mary Michelle on astrology. Now, where were we? We were talking about what now? We're talking about Venus and her. Oh, well, you were talking about the moon. We were talking about the moon. But you see, they're both, they're the two feminine elements in the chart. Um, you know, Venus is the more flirt 
flirtatious, fun element, and moon is, the moon is more about commitment and daily routines. Um, the moon actually, the sun and the moon are the, the components that will make a marriage work because they're more about your, your will, your ability to see things through to the end. Whereas Venus and Mars are what are going to be what, how you will attract people or how you will be attracted to people. Um, Venus, you know, she's the one that, she was very jealous, you know, the st in the story of um, Helen of Troy, was it Helen of Troy, when the, uh, when Paris was asked to decide between the three goddesses, wh who was the most beautiful, whether it was Venus, Hera, or Artemis, Diana, and uh, he didn't choose Venus. So her, <laughs> what she did in retaliation for not having been chosen as the most beautiful was that she, um, she uh, caused him to fall in love with this creature that was unattainable, Helen. Um, so he, you know, created this, there was this war that happened because he abducted Helen of Troy. So that's the kind of thing that Venus does when she's, you know, foiled. Um, also with, uh, it's usually having to do with uh, competition and jealousy. She's not someone that likes to have someone else be more beautiful or more interesting in any way. Um, her son, Eros, was in love with, the, um, with this nymph called Psyche. And uh, Psyche was um, someone that, again, was extremely beautiful. And Psyche, the word Psyche means soul, and she is represented by the butterfly. So in, in ancient uh, Greece, whenever you saw a butterfly, you would think of that as being someone's soul that was, you know, flying. Anyway, Venus was not particularly happy with Psyche because she was extremely beautiful and everybody loved her. She was a very kind person. And anyway, so she... Um, uh, caused this situation whereby she, uh, she, what had happened exactly, Eros uh, was, uh, they, they could see each other at night, but not during the daytime, because she could not see the Eros in the full light of day. She couldn't see a god, she wasn't a full goddess herself, so she couldn't see the full light of, of, of the, the strength of the um, power of, you know, the, the god of light. So what happened was that she, uh, Venus caused her to become terribly uh, curious, and she pulled off, she turned on the light when, when Eros came to her in the middle of the night, and that was what caused her to die, and then Eros had to bring her back from the underworld. Anyway, these are the kinds of things that, that Venus did whenever she was put into competition. She did not like to be competed with. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. That's okay. That's it. <laughs> okay. All right, um, 20 minutes past the hour now at WVIP. I understand we have somebody on the line, but they don't want to be on the radio. Okay. So Pam is calling. Her date of birth is September 27th, 1971. She's uh, watching on cable TV over in Yorktown. Uh, I assume what she wants is, uh, let me just ask her for a second here. Pam, I assume you want a regular reading? Okay, stand by. All right, she, she would like to know general trends for the coming year. Okay. Uh, 71, 1971. Okay, that was the year of the pig, if uh, you didn't know that. <laughs> that is Chinese. Chinese there year of the pig. There are 12 of them. Um, 927. Okay, she was born um, with the sun in Libra and the moon in Capricorn. That's a, a bit of a hard angle. Um, it means that the nature of the sun and the moon, the will, the uh, ability to uh, get your will across can be foiled because you unconsciously don't always want what your conscious self wants. It usually means that there's kind of a, your experience as a child that there might have been um, kind of a push-pull in the way that you saw your parents, the polarity of the male and female in your life. Um, so perhaps, you know, the nature of the way that you uh, incorporate the male and female uh, in your relationships, uh, it doesn't mean that you wouldn't have fun in your relationships, but sometimes when it gets down to making that firm commitment, it might be a little more difficult. With the moon in Capricorn right now, this year the planet Jupiter is transiting there, so you're having a lot of luck in your daily routines and rituals, however you, you perceive the, um, how you feel that you would um, like your, your 
your life to change, you know, in your career. Capricorn is always about career. With the moon in Capricorn, it's like you unconsciously, that's probably the most important thing in your life. Although with the sun in Libra, of course, it's, it's more about relationships. So anyway, the, um, the moon in Capricorn, you have Mercury in Virgo, Venus in Libra, Mars in Aquarius. Mercury in Virgo, it's in its own sign. Um, you're someone that works very good with analysis. If you, if you want to analyze something, you can usually get to the, um, the root of it pretty quickly. You're very logical. Um, <clears throat> also quite good with computers. Venus in Libra, you have a Sun-Venus um, conjunction. So that, uh, that's very nice, particularly for a woman, because it usually indicates beauty, an understanding of beauty, and that you look quite beautiful, or you know how to make yourself look quite beautiful, which is a, a good good thing to do, particularly for a woman. Well, it's good for a guy, too. <laughs> anyway. Well, yeah, it's fun and it's <laughs> important. All right, uh, 23 minutes past the hour, taking your calls at 241-1310 for Mary and Michelle. We'll be back in two minutes. The following is a paid political announcement. Bedford Central School elections are on Wednesday, May 8th, at your local elementary school. This is Betsy. And with it, you will be able to get through 241-1310, the number to call, as we attempt to fix the problem with the phone. <laughs> Here she is again, Mary Michelle. We're talking about Venus. Um, Venus, which is everything. I mean, it's the, the planet. It is a, a Greek god. Greek and Roman. And Roman and Babylonian, you told me. Babel Ishtar was her name then. Wasn't and that a bad movie, though? I mean... Ishtar? <laughs> yes, well, it was, the, exactly. Let me ask you a dumb question, mm. because that was probably, with the exception of maybe one or two other movies, I'm thinking of Waterworld right now, the biggest flop ever to come out of uh, Hollywood. Was there any significance, the name, with it being so terrible? Did it take place? Didn't it take place in that part of the world? Wasn't yes. it in a desert yes. or something? Mm -hmm. well, I With don't know. It could very well Beatty. be a... What? The camel in Warren Beatty. Right. <laughs> exactly. Wasn't it Dustin Hoffman, too? It was kind of an odd combination. But, you know, maybe um, Venus wasn't happy. Maybe it was released at the wrong time. Lots of times... Um, I know there are a lot of people in Hollywood, producers and directors and so on, that do try to consult the charts as to when um, would be the best release date for a film. And, you know, certainly Venus is, is very predominant in, um, in Hollywood. Uh, you know, most of the people that we think of, most of the, the stars in Hollywood, um, from, you know, Gloria Swanson to Michelle Pfeiffer, it's about uh, Venus energy. Um, even the men, you know, I mean, usually the men that, you know, the Robert Redfords or the uh, Rudolph Valentinas or whatever, they too would also have had, you know, a strong Venus in their chart to have been able to attract so many people. Venus was about uh, Venus in our chart. Everybody has her. It's about our ability to attract. So when you think about the flame, the moth coming to the flame, the moth coming to the light, she is really the light, and she attracts and it's the way in which you attract people. Um, maybe I should do Venus in the signs. Would you like to hear about that? I'm waiting. I want to see where I am. <laughs> well, I know, but I'd have to... I can't I know, remember. I don't, want, I don't want you to do it. It's okay. I can't remember where your Venus is, but anyway... It's up there somewhere. It's up there somewhere. And I, you know, I think to, I can only encourage people to try to find out, you know, a little bit more about their chart, because if you find out where Venus is, then that you, you realize where, you're, where you would best enhance your ability to attract other people. So, Venus and Aries. Now, the person with Venus and Aries would, this is the first sign of the zodiac, the person with Venus and Aries would be someone that would be, uh, the way that they would attract would be about being quite forceful. They would present, they would present themselves as being kind of um, the gladiator or the warrior princess or someone that, you know, is quite uh, a bit of a warrior themselves. And that, and then they would attract people to them that would perhaps be a little bit more different diplomatic and soft-spoken. Soft so, you know, men or women, someone with Venus and Aries is going to be someone that is, um, will present themselves as being quite aggressive. But this does not mean that this is the person that is aggressively going after love. This is the person that is showing themselves as being aggressive, so uh, then people are attracted to them usually as a moderate, uh, moderating principle. Um, <laughs> Would you like to take a phone call? Sure. We finally got the thing working here. Okay. Ed, are you there? I'm here. Oh, good. Ed is calling from Bedford, watching on cable channel 12. He's calling for his wife. Date of birth is May 8th, 1940. Almost a happy birthday. <laughs> Almost. Almost happy birthday. What can you tell me, Mary? May 8th. What was the year? 1948. 48. Okay. Well, that was the year of the rat, if you... <laughs> 
didn't know, and this year also is the year of the rat, so it's a it's probably a good year for her. Let's see, May eighth. Um, Okay, the sun in Taurus, the moon in Taurus. She was born at the new moon. This is an extremely focused individual. People that are born at the new moon know what they want and are able to go after it. Um, with the sun and the moon and Mercury all in the sign of Taurus, um, this is someone that, you know, likes... Uh, likes things of ease, you know, likes to enjoy the five senses. Um, Taurus is ruled by Venus, which is what we're talking about today, and Venus rules the five senses. So this is someone that likes to, you know, take bubble baths, likes things to smell good, and likes to eat well, and likes fine fabrics, and, and probably, you know, appreciates the material things in life. Um, this is uh, not necessarily a bad thing. You know, I know that our culture or our philosophy sometimes promote uh, the idea of too much material is, is, is bad and too much is, but you have to feel good about being in the physical body. Is that, would you say that's something that rings true for her? Yeah, pretty close. Yeah. How, how about uh, with uh, siblings and children? Her siblings or? Both. Both, okay. Um, Venus and Cancer, Mars and Leo. Um, well, there is a harmonious aspect between Mercury and Venus, so she probably understands and is able to communicate quite well, um, certainly when she's in the environment of, of cooking or doing. Um, it may not always be about verbal communication. She may not be able to... Um, it's, her presence will be felt more strongly with these people than uh, perhaps the way that she explains herself. She's a good... Um, she makes a good impression, but it's kind of like the theater versus film. She'd probably be quite good in the theater. Um, that live presence, um, so dealing with, you know, people in general, um, but siblings and, and uh, you know, uh, children as well, I would think, uh, you know, she's a very warm, nurturing kind of person. How about with uh, family, her own family? Well, you see, this your your siblings and your own family. There is there can be a connection, and astrologically, one follows the other. Uh, the third house is the is the siblings and neighbors. The fourth house is the family. So usually, those two components will go from one into the other. If the relationship with the siblings and her own family there was this kind of a of a nurturing, uh, cuddly kind of thing, then into the next into her own family, she would recreate that as well. And what then, and finally, what kind of work is she best suited to do? Well, um, you know, I mean, she's somebody that likes to have a good time and likes to be theatrical. She likes to be, and, and part of her issues in life, Saturn and Leo, are about learning how to be a child and the right kind of child. So she should be dealing out there in the public, dealing with people in some capacity, although she probably would rather stay at home. I have to go. Thanks okay. for calling. Okay, thank you. Right. You, you had mentioned dealing with children and things like that. Are there certain, certain well, planets he, that... Uh, well, the sign of Leo is yeah. about children. So depending on where Leo is in your chart, everybody has all the signs in their chart. Uh, people with Saturn in Leo, uh, Saturn is always where we have the most difficulty. And people with Saturn in Leo are the ones that have to learn how to be and nurture their own inner child. Okay. Uh, we got another call here. Uh, Judy, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay, Judy's calling from Putnam Valley. She's watching on Cable Channel 12. Date of birth is October 2nd, 1940, 10 to 40. Judy, you're on with Mary Michelle. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm good, thank you. And you? Good. Um, I was wondering, I'm going to be changing positions at work. I've been at the same job for four years, but I'm going to be changing my title. And how will I be doing? Okay, the Sun in Libra, the Moon in Scorpio, Mercury in Libra, Venus in Leo. Um, uh, is, is this place that you're going to be working, are there, are there men that work there as well? Yes. Yeah, because it's, it's a good time for working with men. Is it? Yeah. Um, I, it doesn't mean there isn't any indication that it isn't a good time to be working with women, but there's more of an emphasis on that on, on, on the male principle for you in your chart. Um, let's see. Um, do, is it with computers? Do you work with computers in any capacity? Uh, yeah, yeah. 
Well, they're, they're with Mars and Virgo, you have Mars and Virgo and Jupiter and Taurus, Saturn and Taurus. You know, certainly in terms of, of money and dealing with practical matters, you're having a lot of luck on your side this year. So, you know, I would think that you would be able to incorporate yourself in that kind of a position with ease. Oh, good. Um, you know, but I would particularly look to, um, you know, the men and, and understanding, I mean, you know, as a Libra, the nature of Libra in general is there's someone that, that is, is very good at diplomacy and, and trying to understand the nature of relationships. But remember, it is ruled by Venus. Yes. So you want to have fun a little bit with some of these, uh, you know, nothing serious, but just have fun with the people that you're working with, particularly the men. Okay. 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 Thank you for calling. Thanks for calling. All right. Line one, Terry is calling from Bedford. Date of birth is March 3rd, 1945. 3 3 45. And Terry is watching on cable channel 12 over in the town of Bedford. Good morning. You're on with Mary Michelle. Good morning. Hi, Terry. Hi. March 3rd, 1945. Did you have a particular question? Well, I, I had called you in a few weeks ago when you had forgotten to bring a book with you or something. Oh, my. And you said to call <laughs> back. Um, well, yeah, I'm in the middle of an unpleasant divorce. Um, my child's real upset by it. So I sort of wondered what you, if you could see an outlook for her, um, you know, coming to terms with this and for my future and any other romance or how my business will go, <laughs> everything. <laughs> okay, um, you have the sun in Pisces, as you know, and the uh, moon in Scorpio. So, you know, it's definitely not been an easy time the last 12 years um, for your moon, for your feminine, for the part of yourself that is the feminine, and this is a female child? Yes. Yeah, it, that's been difficult, and your relationships with your mother probably as well. Is your mother alive? Yeah, she's a demented in a nursing home, and it's been a nightmare. Yeah. So, My anyway. Is 12, but, just turned 12. Oh, uh, well, anyway, the thing is that it's over, you know, and it was really over in November. But what happens with the nature of fear and, you know, particularly as we get a little older, we, we tend to remember the bad, you know, we tend to remember the, the negative and the difficult times. And you really have moved on now. There's, there's no reason for you to hang on to that. It's a very, very good time for you to take initiative in everything that you're doing, and you'll find that people will come back to you, will reach out to you much better than they have, but I'm